Hey everyone, welcome to Bickering Book Reviews. I'm Sarah. And I'm Becky. And I'm going to give a warning. I am feeling sinusy, and so hopefully I will make it through this. Um, okay, we'll so, see. We'll see. <laughs> this is like 15 minutes of me dying. All right, so we're talking about Born to Fly, the first women's air race across America, which is super hard to find on Goodreads, by <laughs> Steve Schenken. Um... I read it, but you listened to it, right? I did. Okay. So, and this came up on our systems mock list. So we were like, hey, we got to read this anyway. And, you know, or you can never, never hurts to have more mock books out in the right, world. Right, no. Right. So that's why I read it. And it's essentially, it talks about the, um, the beginnings of aviation, but women's aviation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the women who are staying in the air the longest, the women that are going the highest, the women that are crossing the Atlantic, the women that are um, kind of going the furthest. And essentially it's about all of the very key female pilots in the beginning. And 1929. They talk about many, many names and it was very hard for me to keep track. So I, the only one I remember is Amelia Earhart, but there's more than just her. Yeah. Um, we'll get there. But it, basically, this all culminates around a um, the Derby, which is basically, it starts in California, goes to Cleveland, Ohio. The only reason why I know Cleveland, Ohio is, you know, I'm familiar with that area. And, um... Well, there's a museum. There's the Women in Air Museum in Cleveland. Where they landed, the, the site of the museum is where the, the oh, Derby ended. Yeah, didn't know that. Um, and basically, this took place over several days, and it just talks about kind of the sabotage that was happening, and, you know, who's in the lead, and who's not in the lead, and, you know, Amelia, you know where Amelia Earhart falls into this is what I kind of latched onto, because that's me. I shouldn't really fall into it that much. That's the thing. I know. Well, I don't want to give too much away on that. Yeah, we're not going to run it, it, though. But um, am I missing anything? No, I mean, that's basically it. Um, there are a lot of names. Like, some of them I was familiar <coughs> with. Um, I can't, Poncho, I can't remember what her last name is, but there's actually, they talk about it, the, like, she owned a bar where they did the testing for, like, when they broke the sound barrier, and there's a scene in The Right Stuff where one of the guys goes into her bar and she gives him a drink, which is mentioned in the book. Um, I mean, I think it's interesting that Amelia Earhart wasn't, wasn't the best pilot. She was, no. she was just kind of the most famous. She was married the to most a, notorious. She was married to a publisher who kept having books written about her. <laughs> that's, that's basically it. Um, and then, so yeah. what, and he was like, he was like listed really as the villain. Like he was seen very So, villainous. and that kind of threw me because like I've, I've read a lot of stuff, like, and I've read stuff about Amelia Earhart, and I never really saw Putnam as described as the villain, but to me in this, like, they made him out to be villain. Um, and I don't know how accurate that is, but I have a hard time with kids' nonfiction because, particularly when I know the subject, because, like, I know the complete subject, and, like, they cut stuff down. Because, like, they were talking about Putnam did something, and why would Putnam do this, and, like, he's just, like, her manager, and I'm literally yelling at the audiobook. I'm like, he was her husband! Maybe that's why he did it, but that's besides the point. Um, the thing I like about Shankin's books is I think that they're accessible to kids. I think that they have more of a narrative voice than that heavy, dry nonfiction. See, and it feels dry for me. Like, there were too many characters. I wish he had focused on one. Whether it was Amelia Earhart or not, like, I would have been fine focusing on, like, Marvel or Poncho or... The person who won. The person who won. Like, right. any of them. Focus the narrative more on their voice. Yes, you can still talk about the others because it's important to know about the others. But in trying to focus on... Because he had three main people that he was focusing on in addition to all of the others that were there. Right. That, like, it just... And, like, some of them had, this like, the same first name. So I'm like, I have no idea who we're talking about. Well, and I was kind of disappointed after I listened to it. I flipped through it looking for pictures. And there were, it's mostly illustrations. And I would have preferred photographs. And that frustrated me as well. Like, it, obviously, it's taking place during a time when we have photographs. You keep talking about how the newspaper people are there. Like, where are the photographs? But I feel like kids who are interested in this, because I have a lot of kids who come in and want nonfiction. I had a little girl the other day who is in, like, seventh grade. And she's like, I want books about real people. I think they'll like it, and I think that I think that it's an important story what he's telling, and I think it's interesting. I mean, it wasn't my favorite; it wasn't even my favorite book by him. I liked Bomb better. He did Bomb, right? Mm -hmm. I liked that much better. Um, and he did the Notorious, the one we did for book club, the um, Daniel, Daniel Eldridge. Ellsberg one. Yeah, I liked that one better. So, like, I really liked that one the best. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I don't like this. I. If I'm recommending nonfiction, this isn't definite. This isn't one I'm going to go for first. But I can see it making the Newbery list, and I can see it in the classroom, and I can see kids liking it. Um, like 
it's but it's problematic as far as like how the plot is woven in with the characters like it's it's confusing see to me the format was problematic because i didn't love the illustrations and um, that like so i i don't know if it has the stamina to hit i don't know i mean the newberry list should we just rate it Okay, we can rate it. So our rating scale goes from, from five unicorns down to two unicorns. If we don't like it, doesn't get a horn and is therefore a horse. Where are you? It's a three. It's a solid story. Like, I was interested, but I kind of knew who the characters were. I'm a two. Like, I, I still am confused as of, like, who's who, which makes, which frustrates me because I want to know more about them. Plus, some of the illustrations were reused. Yeah. I wasn't thrilled with the illustrations. So that is where we are on Born to Fly. We'll see you around.